Tim Forsman runs the hunter-gatherer archaeology research project and investigates forager innovations, technologies, and indigenous knowledges in the central southern Africa. His research interests include forager-farmer interactions, forager economies, trade dynamics, and landscape archaeology. His books include Bushman Rock Art, an interpretive guide, 2012, Beyond the Drip Line, Later Stone Age Changes on the Greater Mapungubwe Landscape, 2013, and Foragers in the Middle Limpopo Valley Trade, Placemaking and Complexity, 2020. He gained his doctorate, his PhD, in 2014 and has been working for the last nine years in this field, uncovering South Africa's history. And without further ado, here is the incredible Tim Forsman. Okay, my name is Tim Forsman. I'm a lecturer at the University of Mpumalanga and an archeologist. I specialize in hunter-gatherer research primarily, uh, examining stone tools, beads, jewelry, ornamentation, and rock art. But my, my field of speciality also involves how hunter-gatherer groups, so San uh, groups, and that's a term that's been elected by the Khoisan Council in South Africa to use, how they interacted in the past with incoming farmer agriculturalist societies. And uh, so I work in mostly uh, the northern part of the country, but we also do some work in other areas, you know, Mozambique, Lesotho and so on. Uh, and that's, that's primarily what I do, but I also do a bit of research into the South African war and particularly how women and children hid during the war to avoid concentration camps. But that's a bit of a sort of side passion project, yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And how long have you been doing this? When did you get your degree mm. and how long have you been doing it? I received my PhD in January 2014 okay. and then I started working, actually I started working four days later. Um, uh, it was my, my first lecturing, well my first class as a lecturer was four days later. Um, and, you know, obviously getting a PhD, you know, you enter varsity 2005, so it's about a nine year process to, to, get, to get through to a PhD. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it takes time. Yeah. <laughs> it takes a lot of commitment, yeah. but it's good fun. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so 2014, it's basically been in universities uh, and a bit of contract work here and there and a bit of unemployment here and there as everyone's story goes, yes, you know, yes. but, um, but yeah, for the last uh, five and a half years, yeah, five years, I've been working as a senior lecturer. Oh wow, that's incredible. Mm. So what has been the most interesting discovery mm. or experience yeah. that you've had in your work? Because there's so many things you do. Yeah. And for me, the hunter-gatherer side is really cool. Like yeah. I'm a chef, okay. I love cooking. Yeah. And I think our ancestral background is kind of who we are mm. and we've lost that. Yeah, sure. So what has been your most interesting discovery, whether it was a thing yeah. or it was an idea? Yeah. Like the way the Khoisan used to live. You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's such a interesting question i get asked it every now and then and i never have a good answer oh, that's okay <laughs> so like in terms of a thing you know there's there's we, we deal with really small things some of the to stone tools i'm dealing with are the size of your pinky fingernail you know wow um and so it's not this sort of big grand stuff often um yeah. so some one of the cool things i found uh, at an excavation in lesotho which we don't, i don't know how old it is exactly but it was in layers probably around about nine thousand years old um, it was a Kona shell from the coast, which was about 200 k's away, with a, with a hole bored through the base, uh, or the tip rather. Uh, so it was probably a necklace or something. And what just struck me about that is, is the, how old it was, or like, is likely to be, and the distance that it traveled to be in this funny little cave in the top of the mountains of Lesotho. Uh, and that was just quite cool, you know. So those finds are quite nice, getting glass beads wow. and things like that. At where we do a lot of our work um, at a shelter called Little Muck Shelter in, in Mapungubwe National Park, mm -hmm. we found a huge amount of crafted goods. And oh, wow. what we've just sort of, with my postdoc, this year we published a paper where she's done some experiments to try and determine what was being made with these artifacts. Oh, wow. So she replicates the artifacts, she works them like on animal skin, bone, shell, whatever. Yeah. And then she looks at how they deteriorate and then compares those patterns to the archaeological assemblage. And what we found there is that as soon as farmer groups appeared in the area, Bushman activities changed completely. Oh, and suddenly wow. they started working bone and not animal hide and shell and so on. And that's really cool. You know, those are interesting little findings that we make, you know. Um, and then, of course, there's, you know, the other sort of, we're working at Tulamela now as well. We're mm -hmm. starting our work at Tulamela. So the prospect of finding really cool things there is pretty massive. Yeah, you know, I like can that. imagine what you do is very exciting. Yeah. Like the idea yeah. of the story, yes, figuring yeah. it out, the hunt, the treasure hunt. Yeah, yeah, the tre yeah exactly. The, the hunt, well, what's under there, you know, like, basically. yeah, exactly. I always say to my students, 
we say, well, what are we going to find this? And I always say, there's only one way to find out. We've got to get digging, you know, so. You're like a modern uh, version of uh, Indiana Jones. <laughs> yeah, minus the Nazis and stuff, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah of course, <laughs> of course. No, you're a little bit more progressive yeah. than that. Yeah. It's really cool, oh my yeah. gosh. Your, your, what you do seems to be quite complex. I think there's a yeah. lot of, there's a lot of uh, thinking that's involved. Yeah. And, and w when it comes to that side of it, like the, the, the word side of it, the writing side yeah. of it, do you journal stuff? Do you, yeah. do you keep documents? Mm. Do you have somebody who does it for you? Or yeah, we, you... yeah, we do. Yeah. Okay. No, we keep um, some people more than others. We, we keep quite a lot of documents. So we have a series of different uh, forms to complete at every stage of the process. I have uh, journals that I use and okay. complete. That's cool. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of paperwork that we, we deal with. Is there a book um, coming? Uh, we the, want to see a book. There, there, might, might, there might be. That'd be incredible. <laughs> yeah, no, there is something in the works for next year. I just okay. don't know how I'm going to meet the deadline, but that, yeah, that's, a, yeah, that's yeah. tomorrow's problem. Yeah. yeah, that's true. But no, so, yeah, so it's, it's a very slow process about how we deal with all these things. Mm. Um, and it's, it is a scientific procedure. You know, um, in Indiana Jones, Balak once said, archaeology is not an inexact science, or isn't an inexact science. And, and, and for, you know, that's sometimes the reality, but we follow certain scientific principles, procedures. So our digging is not just digging down. It's, mm -hmm. it's slow, meticulous. Um, we have a lot of measures and controls. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it frustrates people that we're not moving quicker. But the thing is, we have to be so cautious about what we're dealing with yep. from a respect point of view, from a science point of view, and, and so on. So, so, yeah, it is a very complicated process. Uh, it can be very frustrating, but it can be really rewarding as well when you find something interesting or even just, you know, underground, you have these often interlocking soil horizons that we have to work through. Sure. And sometimes even just figuring out when you've been confused for a day or two about what's actually going on, and then suddenly, you know, it reveals itself, you figure it out, oh, wow. you know, and, and, and that's these wonderful feelings. It's that's rewarding. okay, cool, I know exactly what's going on now. You dig a little more and then you lost all over again. <laughs> you oh, know? wow. You made but a, that's you, the process. You might so. have answered my question already. So my, my thought process takes me towards patience. Yeah. You obviously have a lot of patience <laughs> yeah. for all the you know, the procedures and obviously all the people yeah. you work with and obviously having to be very sensitive and careful. Yeah. What is it that gets you through that? How do you stay strong, basically? Yeah. Is it that reward at the end of yeah. it? That by being patient, you get the thing eventually? Yeah, for or... sure. Um, I think the, the reward is pretty, is pretty epic. Um, yeah. Look, obviously, you know, being on your knees, digging with a brush or with sometimes with dentist tools, you know, um, it's, it can be very, very slow, but, but that's entertaining, you know, because yes. you're sitting there and you're literally peeling back layers of history as that's you go, incredible. you know. And you're revealing parts of our human past that haven't been seen for yes. hundreds, thousands of years. So, and, and also for me, what's, what's really um, motivating is working with the students. You know, obviously uh, as a lecturer, yeah. and I go into the lecturing field, not just for research, yep. but also to work with students and train people. So to be there with students yep. and watch them take on leadership roles, watch them figure things out, yeah. and sort of be part of that. That's and you're inspiring also really awesome. them and planting yeah, and they, that seed in the yeah, next generation. And, and then vice versa, you know, they inspire me as well, because sure, to, sure. Watch, to watch some of them, how well they do, you're like, man, that's cool. I, yeah. I need to be better now. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> it makes you okay. That's very so, cool. Yeah, so I think it's, it's a combination of different, look, some days are tough, you know, yes, there's no two sure. ways about it. Some days you get out there and it's, 30, it's 36, 37, okay. 38 degrees. You're in the sun a lot. You're not finding much. When you, yeah. Often when you start the excavation, it takes quite a long time to get going. Yes. You don't get a lot, you know. Yeah. So we're all really excited to begin digging. And the first day or two, you, you know, you're not moving really anything yeah. at all. Kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, so, yeah. so some days are tough. Mm -hmm. and, but, you know, but ultimately, yeah, no, it's, it's very rewarding. It's a lot of fun, yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. I'm, I might be putting words mm. in your mouth, but it sounds like you're very curious about history. Yeah, you love yeah. history. Cause I'm sure you have to be with what you do. What is... What is your take on history mm. in terms of what role does it play in our present yeah. and also in our future? How important is history, especially for, yeah. for me a, from a generational perspective? Mm. You know, like let's look at the, the new generation coming in now, yeah. like your Gen X. Yeah. They grew up with technology. They're growing up with technology. Yeah. And then your, your baby boomers, like yeah. my parents, yeah. who had no technology yeah. and, you know, they just got to do whatever they wanted to. So where's, what's your take on mm. history and where do you think as yeah. a civilization we should be looking and focusing? Yeah. On history. Yeah, I think this is. Uh, it is. Uh, I think it's very important. You know. Uh, you know. The, I've. I've. I've grappled with this idea since I was an undergrad. Is if you take all the archaeology, all the stone tools, all the beads under the ground, all that, and you just kind of it disappears. Mm. How would it change our lives today? Mm. Um, and uh, you know. So why is it important that we do this? Um, and and I think obviously these these kinds of difficult questions have complex answers, but. But I think there's there's a number of really essential or crucial points here. So so the one if we look at Africa, 
we look at our colonial past. You know, we look at a history that has often been marred by the settlement by Europeans, they spread through the region, but also because a lot of local and indigenous knowledge systems, uh, intangible and tangible her cultural heritage was kind of ignored and in some cases destroyed. Yes. And, and, and because it's been ignored, it doesn't feature in our historical texts. Yes. So through archaeology, it's one of the few ways that we can access these first-hand accounts that, that people who eventually became oppressed in these parts of the world yes. uh, left behind. Yeah. And, and so it's, 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 a, it's, it's one of a very small set of studies or disciplines that will allow us to sort of look beyond that colonial gaze into mm. our past. And I think that's crucial mm. because of the impact of not just colonialism from its roots, but all the way through into the present uh, policies in our country, apartheid and you know, all these things, we can use archaeology to kind of look beyond that in a yeah. sense. And, and studies around the world have shown that through historical uh, studies, archaeology, it fosters improved civil society, um, stronger identity roots, it improves cohesion within society as well. And a country as diverse as ours, you know, if we look at, you know, recent things in the country, how we can unify around our heritage, you know, yes. so it's, 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 there's a huge amount of benefit. Yep. There's also a very important spin-off around uh, physical and mental health. Okay. And I include natural cultural heritage as well. Yes. Um, so like, for example, during COVID, they found that people not being able to do traditional cultural practices, for example, accessing the bush and so yes. on as well, people had negative mental health um, repercussions wow. because of that. So there's a lot of really interesting spin-offs that you don't necessarily think of. Yep. Um, and then, of course, there's also a lot of skills development, um, uh, knowledge about, you know, there's the adage, um, you don't know where you're going until you know where you've been type stuff, you know. Yes, sure. Um, and sure, that's a bit idealized and so on, but it, it does it does ring true in some respects, you know, that understanding our past helps us understand ourselves. It helps us understand our decision-making processes, our relationships with people, our relationships with the environment. Um, yes. You know, you know, so I think all of these, these different elements are really important in a complex society like our own to try and unpack all of this and, and better understand the society we live in. That's very, very cool. I, I, in a way, it's like you're a, you're a, a truth seeker and you're kind of finding yeah. the truth about humanity and yeah. how we fit into the, to the rest of the world. Yeah. Especially if you look at like nature, because a lot of your work is based in yes, nature, exactly, yeah. in the open environment. And, and, and you know, nature's been here since the beginning mm. of time. Humans have been here like mm. a split second on the yeah. timeline. Yeah. So it's it's really interesting for you to be able to go out there and learn all these different things and see, yeah. you know, like let the artifacts themselves yeah. tell you those stories. Yeah, exactly. And that 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 becomes a problem, you know, because you know if, if we if we sit here like we are today, we can have a cup of coffee at some stage drink our coffee, our cup falls off the table here, we throw that in the rubbish, and that's the kind of stuff archaeologists deal with. Yeah. So we find the cups, we don't know what that we drank a cup of coffee, or that it was yes. tea, or that it was soup, or whatever it may have been. And that's a simple little example. That is so but in the past, cool. people eating like honey, that. people you know, doing various various activities, yes. ritual activities, yes. beliefs, that stuff doesn't preserve. That's so true. And so it becomes really sticky, you know? Yeah, yeah, And yeah, yeah sure, we, we have advanced techniques. There's some great work that was done in Lesotho recently and now in, in the Richtersvot in the Makwaland region, okay. looking at uh, lipids, so fatty um, adherence into pots and being able to determine, for example, that sand groups had milk. What? So that means they must have had some form of access to livestock whether they own the livestock themselves or, or they got it from someone else. And the work that I do, but now all we really find is the pot, you know. So the work that I do is how do these groups interacted. So I get the pots. Yeah. I have no idea what was in the pot. Yeah. I, don't, I can't even tell whether the pot was the intended trade item yes. or they were just the vessel to transfer sorghum, millet, milk, blood. Oh, I have wow. no idea, you know. So, or honey, you know, so, so, yes. so, so there's a lot missing, you know, and that's why we study multiple sites because then yes. with that, you can bring that data together. But yes. so, yeah, so we, we do try and find, you know, what actually happened in the past, but we, we readily acknowledge our chance of, you know, hitting Pin the nail on the head, pinpointing it is sure. probably quite diminished. Yes, huh? but when you do get some sort of an idea or truth, yeah. like you were saying with the sand mm. um, and the agriculture, when the when the agriculture came, then they changed their tools. Yeah. Like yeah, that yeah, yeah. is really interesting. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so like you have really cool stuff. So another example of that is these little stone arrowheads. They're absolutely spectacular. Yes. You find them in the orange in the Senku River watershed region. And they're beautifully crafted. I mean, if you think of a mouse cursor, you know, mm. a pointy mouse, that's what it looks like, but yes. made from stone. They're yes. fantastic. That's and, uh, and then in the Kalahari region, um, 
once Iron Age people, so once farmer society moved in, mm. uh, the groups are in Botswana, the, the hunter-gatherer groups preferred to be called Bushmen in that region. Okay, so okay. Bushmen in that area um, started trading for metal. And then they produced oh, these yeah. phenomenal arrowheads out of metal. Wow. And they became these important identity markers. So each group would have slightly different styles. Oh, wow. so, so that kind of Did information... Did they signature it? Did they have it was like, like decorations and things oh, like that. Right. And okay. slightly different shapes and so on. Okay. And the reason we know they're different styles is because you can find them regionally constrained. So you find, sure. you know, in, in this area you find that style, in this area you find that style. Yes. But also ethnographically, so working with modern societies, mm -hmm. that information's come come to light, you know. That's so, incredible. So it's those phenomenal details you can pick up, you yes. know, in the archaeological record that are just And I can imagine blowing. collaborating is a big help part big of that. Big time. Yeah, and that's, that's another big development in sort of modern archaeology yes. in the past. Bunch of white dudes running around the place yeah, yeah, yeah. looking for some cool stuff. Yeah. Correct. Whereas, Trying to get almost rich or famous off of it to, yes, to discover yeah. things. Now yeah. it's about the actual now history and discovery. Yeah, and, and big time and a lot of collaboration with communities. That's amazing. So just to you know, you know, we with the work that we want that we're starting in Tulamela, uh, we've worked with the Makuleki community oh, who have amazing. had obviously a successful land claim in, in uh, the early nineties. We've worked close. We in fact we had our whole project approved by them before we even went to Sand Park. And it's amazing. that kind of collaborative yes. relationships we've cr we create nowadays. Yes. It's not it's, us. It's it's, it's, it's kind of healing the job. past actually because you know we can look at our past yeah. however we want to. But it, it, yeah. is, it is a little bit shady. Or, yeah, yeah, big time, yeah. Yeah, you know, there's a little bit of animosity yeah. around. It's a bit yeah. more than shady. Yes, yeah. Um, so, in a way, you're healing that yeah. past. You know, you're giving them an opportunity to tell their story, yeah. to show their culture. Yeah, exactly. And give yeah. them a little bit of the spotlight. Yeah. Because what they yeah. do is amazing, you know. Like, yeah, absolutely. It's and incredible what they've, what yeah. they've accomplished in their area with yeah. their accessibility, you know, their tools and their yeah, 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 resources. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, and, and you know, it, when people have done this previously, uh, and, and, I mean, we're all guilty of this, but... Is, is often we use that information from communities. Yes. But what, the, what, the, what we're trying to achieve now, a number of archaeologists are trying to achieve, is not just to kind of mine communities for their knowledge, like, yeah. but also to, to go to communities and say, well, you know, we're doing this because we're interested in it. Yes. What are you interested in? You know, what can, how can we help you with regards to the past? Is there, for example, something you guys go, we, we don't really care about how old things are. We want to know about maybe where the king, lived, the chief lived. That's okay, we can, we can factor that into our research and let's work together on achieving that goal. You know? That makes sense. And obviously the big issue is job creation in a country like ours. And sure. that, that factors in as well with skills transfer and so on. But, sure. But yeah, so so that's the, a big beneficial factor, yeah. the skills transfer, giving them yeah. accessibility to the new world, to the, yeah, and to the modern world yeah. in a way. If you take the park, for example, Kruger, there's a lot of research researchers out there so if, okay. if we're through your project yes. you can you can work you know with in, in, in these engagements and you can d develop uh, photography skills GPS use skills yes. and it's not just this, it's not just usable usable in an archaeological Archeolo context yes. it's now a, a person doing tree research can also employ that person so that's kind of the idea is to to you know try and face some of these challenges we face in our country through our research and, and address probably in a very small way yeah. but whatever we can try and do we, we attempt to do yeah it's very very cool yeah. I'm, li I'm liking the fact that you entered to Kruger talk about with mm. the Kruger is what is from your guys research and mm. discovery what was the first like when was the first era of mm. first the tribes yeah. when were the tribes and then when did the Europeans start yeah, coming yeah. in there? And how did how did things change yeah, sure. after that? Yeah. You know that interaction because then there was you know it was a lot about hunting back mm. then. Um, but yeah, do you have any were there mm. any discoveries that revealed something yeah. to you about trade systems mm. or yes, that type of yeah. thing? Yeah, so, collaborations maybe yeah. you know so it goes there is so the, the human history of Kruger Park is massive it goes back mm. millions of years um, deep into the Stone Age uh, in northern Kruger for example there's been research going early into the earlier Stone Age and which uh, culture was that tribe was that so this is this we're looking at a period possibly as old as two million years ago there's you know it's related to it's a, it's global human history uh, there's no known group that's group. kind of directly descendant other than ourselves in, in a sense you know so yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so this is we looking we call it the older one period and the Acheulean those are just the stone tool industries so okay. that's really long ago yes in the more recent history there's quite a lot going on in the park uh, so you have hunter gatherers at some stage in time the only people around were really hunter gatherer groups yeah and at about 2000 just probably possibly just more than 2000 years ago Kwe Kwe herders or pastoralists started moving into southern Africa. Okay. It's very debated whether they whether the, the Kwe Kwe that were arrived around in the Cape when, when Jan van Riebeek arrived yes. are the same as the groups that moved earlier or if All they've right. changed. But anyway, needless to say, something some shift did take place around that period in time. Ceramics, um, sheep start arriving. Yeah. And so and that includes those areas of Kruger Park as well. Okay. 
the southern regions especially, um, and you see a little bit of what, what people suspect is their rock art. So, ah. so at about 2,000 years ago, talking in broad brush terms, 2,000 years ago, you have hunter-gatherers and the arrival of herders. So that's a, that's a big shift in the way you live your life. Mm. Not going out to get your animals, it's now you live with your animals mm. and, and so on. And your animals can provide you with milk and whatever else. So, and so um, uh, that happened about 2,000 years ago and a few hundred years later the first agriculturalists started to appear. Oh, wow. And this was a massive shift in, in the way people existed in, in nature. Because now you have fixed settlements, people are not as mobile, yeah. they have livestock, they have domestic crops, they have iron. Big, yeah. big, big changes. And their entire worldview is completely different. Um, and so this is uh, the ancestors of Zulu, Kosa groups and, and Sutu okay. and so on. Uh, positive relationship with ancestors, totally different worldview from, from hunter-gatherer society and Kwekwe society. And so um, that also started to stimulate a lot of change sure. and impacts on the environment. Sure. At that stage, uh, in the mid, earliest, in the mid first millennium AD, external trade started to enter the Kruger National Park. And there's some work happening now at Lataba which oh, is finding wow. some really interesting evidence around very early trade with oh, wow. Arab traders along the East African coastline. And so that's things like glass beads and cloth and a variety of other items. Um, and so that trade is actually what ended up stimulating the rise of Mapungubwe, which is Southern Africa's earliest state level society. You have Mapungubwe appears, it declines in political authority at the same time that Great Zimbabwe appears. Great Zimbabwe declines at the same time that Tulamele and Northern Kruger arise, arises at the, when Kami and Danangombe also appear in Zimbabwe. So Tulamele in the park, also a very, very significant part of our human history wow. um, and in that region. And, in, so to, and that's about the mid-second millennium AD. So you're looking at about, probably it, it was occupied from about 1200, <clears throat> but the kingdom arrived at about 1450. So about you know, 550, 550 years ago. Mm -hmm. European settlement is slightly different. So mm -hmm. obviously in, in, in this part of the world, the, the, the earliest sort of European settlers coming through on a, on a larger scale, the foot trekkers, yes. that kicked off in about uh, 1835, the, okay. the trek was moving. Um, it took several years for them to move into these districts, obviously some failed, uh, failed routes, some successful routes, a lot of, you know, uh, incredible stories. I, I just heard a story the other day about uh, a family relative, well, sorry, a person's relative in the trek, and it was phenomenal, who was really? there when Dingon um, massacred Retief and so on. He was one of the youngsters watching on. <laughs> really cool stuff. What? But so, so a lot of these guys ended up in the southern part of Kruger National Park. Uh, and so you had trading stations, you had Jao Albacini, for example, uh, who's a Portuguese trader who moved up all the way up into the Sotpansberg area. Um, and he has his station there at uh, near Pabeni Gate. And these are these trading ports up in northern Kruger National Park. Um, you had people, there's actually a, a plaque in the park that says um, this was one of the first outspans when people were returning from collecting labor in Mozambique. Collecting labor. Yeah, you know, let's, yeah. uh, we, I think we know what they're saying there. Yes. Collecting labor. So, so, and there were trading posts up there in the, what is now the Makuleki area as well. Um, and that's, so there's, there's a, th that park has been occupied by people for an incredibly long, long period of time. Period of time. And, and if, we, if we move into the, the sort of more recent time when you know, hunting started to take place, poaching, etc., um, it's very, very detailed with a lot of different communities doing very different things Thank as well. You. In, you know, we, we've got a good sense of what's happened in the park because people have done, been doing work there for a while. Yes. But in my opinion, and, uh, and uh, you know, there's a lot of phenomenal research happening there, like the work in Lataba by uh, the University of Pretoria, Alexander Antonitis is leading that. Um, Anton von Fullenhoven's doing a lot of historic work in the park at, like, um, at various uh, uh, horses and so on, and, other, and other, I think he's also been working at like, trading bases and so on. There's been a lot of really great work in the park, uh, some rock art work by people like Conrad uh, de Rosner, but I still get the sense that there's a lot more that, that we can do in the park. Sure. It's a huge area, sure. and, we, I th and I feel like those studies are getting a lot of great detail, okay. but we can still do a ton more. You know, yes. Tulamela, for example, has been studied, but not in a lot of detail, surprisingly. You know, there, yeah. There's been three excavation seasons there, only one of which has been published. The yes. rest hasn't been touched, you know, so, and, and this is a famous Af African kingdom, you know, so, yes. so I think the park is, is still very much an open book for a lot of stuff that can be done, you know, really? in terms of the work. And it, you know, the, in the Sakusa region, there is rock art sites, well, in the Birkendal area, sorry, there's rock art sites through the roof. You and know, some and, of them haven't been <clears throat> discovered. And yeah, or they've been just recorded, so we know that they're there. there and, and that's it, yeah. Wow. So there's just still so much potential in the park for, for really um, learning more about our sort of heritage in this region. That's really cool. I think 
to, to start closing it off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull us into the future now. Mm. And I want to ask, in your opinion, what could you say to people out there to, to kind of inspire them yeah. to do this work? Like, mm. how do we move in that direction yeah. of starting to actually go out and find some of these discoveries yeah. or, or go and actually pay attention to yeah. them? And, and do you have like some book, book recommendations mm. or do you, have your mm. o- do you have your own written documents yeah. or, 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 or stuff that you yeah, could yeah, lead yeah. us to to help us yeah, sure. understand more? Yeah, so, they, so in terms of people getting behind our heritage and, and, and archaeology, history, yes. all those sort of things. especially archaeology. It's, yeah, you know, there's, there's so much out there and it's, you know, if, if we walk around here for long enough, we'll find something, like, without a doubt. If we go, yeah. I, you know, often hit across the bridge here, go for walks and runs and things, there's stuff out there too, you know. Yeah. It's all over the place. So, yes. you know, for people who, who are interested in it, keep an eye out. You'll see it. You'll find some pottery, you'll find some stone tools, you might find some beads, some really nice things. Uh, it, 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 leave it. Yeah, yeah, that's, <laughs> Very important there we go. leave it there. Yes. The, the best practice would be if it's something that you think is of interest to take photographs. You can pick these things up if they're not sensitive. Sure. Pick up a stone tool, pick up a broken piece of pot, take some pictures, get a GPS point and, and, and contact someone. Yes. Um, because they might be working in the area, uh, they might be interested, it might actually lead to some really interesting work. So, so uh, yeah, leave it in place, take some pickies, get some GPS co- codes and, 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 and contact someone. But yes. if, you, if you want to get into this field yes. and say, hey, I'm you know, a youngster or older and I want to yes. study this, this is really interesting yes. to me. Because people love history. It, yeah, exactly. It's probably one of the top five things that's most spoken about. It is. From young to old. It like, is, yeah. We love history. Exactly. And, and what I find with archaeology, when you take people to an archaeological site and they don't know much about it, let's say, sure, as sure. you start to you know, peel back and yes. find a pot here the and talk about turn, this, eh? suddenly people are like, this is really, really cool. fun, yeah, because yeah, it's hands on. Yeah, it's very hands. So that's one yes. thing. If, if if you are a hands-on person, you want to spend time in the outdoors. You know, archaeology is a is a very good option for you. Sure. Obviously, like everything, you have to work hard. Sure. Uh, you know, you have to you work. You have to be disciplined. You have to have a passion for this. Yes. And you have to recognize. Look, I'm not going to be you know earning billions somewhere yeah, and, and flying sure. around the world. Yeah. Um, but it's going to be very fulfilling. Unless you discover yeah. a golden rhino. Yeah. No, but then you then you'll just you give might not to, tell anyone and no, you might just disappear. To, no, I'm joking. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, but so yeah, so you know that it's 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 a lot of hard work, but it's incredibly rewarding. You know? sure. So if you have an interest in, in excavating sites or working, it's not just about excavations. Working with rock art, you know, yes. working in collections and museums, What's working with pe- people. Yeah. Yes. So it's not just working in the field. A lot sure. of archaeologists hate the field, and they oh, work wow. in museums and things like that. So, so but if those interests align, then I think it's a really good option for people. There, yeah, there sure. is work out there. There's private work. There's museum work. There's uh, university work. So there are options out there, um, and and you know you get to work with some really nice people. I I, I think some a nice bunch of people. You know, yes. generally speaking, it's people with a similar interest. It's a bit yep. niche, you know. So um, you, it's a good crowd often, you know. That's and you get cool. to sit around campfires at night, you know, while you're in the field, and you've had a hard day's work, and you've got yes. a cold drink in your hand. It's you know, it's hard to argue. That's true. Um, but yeah, and, and for, for anyone who wants to yeah read up read up a bit, there's a fantastic book called uh, Southern African Archaeology by a guy called Peter Mitchell. Okay. It's uh, it's a, he's about to release an updated version I think early next year so maybe cool. hold your horses just a little bit or find a second-hand version sure for, you know it's a bit cheaper or, or an ebook yes it's brilliant it goes from our earliest archaeological traces around two million years all the way through to the colonial period and and then it wow. talks about where do we go from here with archaeology that's amazing it's a phenomenal book that's incredible. Um, if there's anyone interested in um, the, the rock art of northern South Africa, there's a book called Capturing the Spoor by the Eastwoods. Okay. Probably one of the be- best archaeological books around. Wow. Um, and, and those two I'd highly recommend. There are, there are others as well, um, but those are really great. I've written a book with a guy called Lee Guttridge, which people might know. He's yes. a nature guide trainer. Yes. On Bush, it's called Bushman Rock Art. Uh, oh, it's an wow. interpretive guide to Bushman art. So if people have a specific interest in art around the country, sure. Uh, it's got some nice pictures <laughs> and stuff okay. like that. Yes. But um, yeah, and then there's um, yeah, there's, there's you know there are some books that are far more detailed. You know, uh, there's some there's a lot of really nice stuff into geology as well. Earth and life is a popular one. A lot oh, of people wow. know about. Um, and there's if people that are interested, my in, fancy. yeah, it is. I that's love a great geology. one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and and there's also you know if you go into fossils you know the the okay. human evolution you know then there's books by like you know, from Lucy to language by Don Jones and there's some nice books around that you know okay but I but the book that's the top of my list to be very honest is Peter Mitchell's book um, okay I, I might be a little bit biased because um, he uh, he was my supervisor okay but it's it's a At book least you're that, honest. Yeah. <laughs> At least you're honest but it's a book that it's easy to understand it, it, it's thorough it covers all of the topics. Uh, and it's a book that students use at probably every university that teaches African archaeology. You know? yeah. So it's a great book. Oh, and there's another really good one, actually, called The Human Past. 
The Human the Past. Human past. That's, okay. about, that's a global book, though. Okay. But it touches on... But that's just as good, because yeah. it connects everything, all yes, the dots. It does, yeah, exactly. And that's a phenomenal book. They're also just about to release a new edition. Okay. Um, and that, for global archaeology, is, is, is a great one. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. Well, Tim, I want to say thank you for your time, yeah, number pleasure. one. But also... Thank you for the work that you do. Like I think it's, it's from all of us. Yeah. It's really important what you yeah. do, and um, like you said, it's a bit of a niche, yeah. a, a niche industry. But I think you know history always repeats itself, yeah. and with the modern day, you know this, yeah. people are becoming more interested in yeah. it. You know, like even my brother. He's 25 and he's very active on social yeah. media, but he goes out in Durban and he takes, yeah. he, he films all the different, you know, historical points. Yeah, cool. yeah, and yeah. it's really, you know, it's interesting. It you is, know, yeah. When someone can put something into simple terms yeah. and explain yeah. a very long timeline yeah. and it, you know, it can get those wheels turning. It's really, sure, really yeah, cool. Yeah. So, you know, you, you're out in the field, yeah. you, you, you're teaching students. So you're doing yeah. both sides, yeah. which is really, really cool. So yeah, thank yeah, you so yeah. much for what you do. Is there anything else that you want to share with us? Anything that yeah. you would like to share? Something from mm. what you've learned yeah. or yeah, just something to inspire the future generations sure, or yeah. even all the generations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, everyone needs some sort of inspiration. Yeah. No, sure. I think that you know our archaeological past in this part of the world is, 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 incredible, is incredible because it's something that we don't generally know. So I'd like to encourage people, go out there and, and go visit some of these sites. You know, Some of them are very easy to get to. It doesn't cost a lot of money. It supports local communities, but also it, it'll, it'll give you a much deeper sense of what actually happened in this part of the world yeah. Be not just before the arrival of Europeans mm. but also during our historic period um, yeah. and it's absolutely fascinating and at the end of the day it's just an interest you know as well get out there enjoy it yeah. think wow that was really cool I'm glad I learned something new yeah. now I'm gonna go carry on with my birding or I'm gonna go look yes. at some elephant or whatever you know it's part of these landscapes that we enjoy when we go out in, into nature so so jump in get involved um, you know as always be critical and that of what you but the information you receive um, go watch some documentaries, you know, Netflix has got that one, Cave of Bones now. There we go, Cave you of know, Bones. You know, there's, there's one that people are enjoying. Um, and so, yeah, it's out there. You know, go, yeah. go, go, in, go investigate, go have some fun, go explore. And I'm, I'm pretty sure you'll, people will enjoy it. Yeah. That's yeah. incredible. And thanks so much for having me. I really hey. do appreciate it. And, and, and actually another just final point, because you, you yeah. mentioned the phone, you know. Yeah, yeah. So much of our heritage is now available on those, on those things, you know. 3D, 3D uh, tr uh, journeys you can take through sites. If you Google wow. uh, a really great one, one of my favorite That's ones cool. to look at is the Zamani Project. Zamani. They've done 3D okay. renderings of sites like Lalibela churches, those stone-cut churches oh, in Ethiopia. That's you so can cool. explore the church from your computer. They've wow. got, um, you can go to rock art sites in the, in the Cedarburg region where an archaeologist, Professor John um, Parkington, pops up as a tour guide as you oh, walk. Oh, cool. And so, so the, the digital elements of it's, heritage is really incredible. Oh, so that's wow. another avenue for people to access our past. True, true. That's yeah. very cool. That's actually very exciting. It is. I find it super exciting. Because yeah. you can now, you, you're uncovering the past and you're yeah. putting it where everyone yeah. can access it from anywhere in the from world. From anywhere in the world, exactly. That is yeah. powerful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So as an archaeologist, yeah. it must be a very exciting time for it you is, to, be, yeah. to be living, to do, be yeah. doing what you're doing. Yeah, it's to do, cool. it is. I mean, there's, you know, obviously it comes down to resources, money and time. Yeah, sure. But when you have access to these things, it's super exciting. We're really Amazing. pushing boundaries. It's fantastic. Yeah. Amazing. And I'm really excited, guys. I want to go with them out into the yeah. field. So I'm really excited <laughs> yeah. about that. Yeah. We're definitely going to make a plan yeah, that for that It would be epic. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. And then if we're working up at Tulameda to come and see that landscape. Yes. And I know for, you're into for birding. For people out so. there that don't know, do you explain just mm. quickly, briefly where Tulumela yeah, brief, is? Yeah, cool. So Tulumela is on the Luvuvu River. It's in Northern Kruger National Park, okay. so near, in the Pafuri region, north of Punda Maria Camp. It's on the southern side of the Luvuvu River. Um, so the Luvuvu eventually joins the Limpopo River at yes. Cook's Corner. So it's really at the very top of the park. Wow. It's, it's, it's an absolutely stunning region. Untouched. Uh, it's untouched. I mean, you know, it, it's, a, it, it's, it's these beautiful fever tree forests. Oh, wow. Lovely riparian woodland along the Luvuvu and the Limpopo oh, River. Wow. Um, there's camps like Punda Maria nearby. Uh, there's also houses at Pafuri at the border post you can rent. And then there's Return Africa a camp in the Makuleki side, which uh, is fin a beautiful place. Um, oh, wow. And you can do tours to Tulamela, the archaeological site. It's, a, it's, it's kind of, it's stone walling all over the place, oh, monolithic stones to mark different areas, gold burials there, uh, you know, incredible. human remains um, that have, you know, been excavated under permits and so on. It's an incredible landscape. Uh, and then, wow. of course, from a natural perspective, buffalo, uh, elephant, oh, the wow. birding, pels, you know, pels yeah. up there. Um, it's, it's, it's super, you know, so it's definitely a place of, you know, a bucket list item for people who enjoy the Kruger National Park. Yeah. Sure. And nature yeah. and birds and, yeah. and everything. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, it's so, a wonderful place. Yeah. Thank you so much. Too. Pleasure. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I appreciate Pleasure. it. It's been great. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Great stuff. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, lekker.